Okay, we are up to Mishle 15.2, Tesvav Bez. Uh, yeah, I called this in the in the, the description. Uh, this is a cliche, not cliche, a classic Mishle pasta. Chachamim, fools, speech, results. Lashon Chachamim Tetiv Da'as, Ufi Kasilim Yabia Ivelas. The language of Chachamim. All right, so you say the language. What's uh, the uh, literal speech. meaning? The literal tongue meaning. Tongue. tongue. Of the wise. Tongue of the wise. Tetiv Da'as. I don't know what the Te is, but... Oops. Improves. Improves. Knowledge. Knowledge. Ufi yabia ivelas. The mouth of Kselim will bring foolishness. Nope. But the mouth of fools yabia. Yabia express. expresses. Expresses. Expresses foolishness. Okay. Yeah. What's the shorch of yabia? Um, the shorch of yabia, I would guess. I actually don't know. Because I thought it was. Let's yeah, see. Nun. Oh, ah, uh, no, yeah. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. Right. So it does literally mean to flow, spring, or bubble up. Okay. Which we will put over here. Hold on just one second here. Uh, expresses. But we do use it for express. Okay. Literally. Um, what did I just say? Flow, spring, bubble up. Yeah. Um, okay. So there's that. Um, the Matsudas Tzion says, Tetiv, Inyan Tikun. Okay, so you could say tikkun is to improve, but I guess what's another translation of tikkun? To fix. To fix, yeah, okay, right. So um, so he says, um, uh, uh, to, so tetiv uh, equals to fix or correct. Okay, and then yabia is, he says, inyan dibur, okay, and then uh, yabia is speech. Um so, so speech, uh, sorry, to speak, okay, but um, it's uh, bar, you know, the, the expression, the expression uh, is borrowed from a wellspring that, uh, that, you know, uh, springs, <laughs> no, <laughs> wellspring that, that Flows. is the, the, the source of the flow of lots of water. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. Now I do not. The Saudi Saudi doesn't have a translation here. Um, so I use the the pshitata. You know what the pshitata is? Yeah, it's the it's not Hebrew. What language is it? Syrian. Uh, Syriac. Syriac. Yeah, Syriac. 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 Yeah. Which is when you're allergic to gluten. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it's the Syriac Torah, which is another ancient manuscript, uh, and it's in Aramaic. Uh, Lishna de Hakima, uh, Meshaper Yadata. So how do you say Meshapar? Meshapar. I don't know exactly how to say it. Oh, that's like increases. Um, makes better. Also makes better. Like, like uh, yeah, shapir or shifra, right? Good, improve. Yeah, so shif shifra means Pleasant. beautiful, Pleasant. right? I think it means beautiful. I thought. Pleasant. Is that not yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let me actually check check this. Uh, I'm that's not going to check it out. I'm pretty sure that's what you mean. That. Yeah. Bye. Um. So I I think it's like beautifies. Okay. Um. Uh. Upuma desichla gasa lotsa. Okay. So. I was not exactly sure how to translate that. So, so oh, actually, I looked it up two days ago, but I forgot what it was. Uh, you know, gasa is is a term that we uh we often use. Gas. Gasa rafa. Say again. The large. Yeah. So it means. Uh. Yeah. I, I think it's more like um. Yeah, like a gasa, right? Like like um. Or libogasa. Right. Coarse or or well, it can mean coarse or puffed up, right? So let's just say gasa. Is uh oh. gasa is large quantity or intemper intemperately gas bulky huge lar large <laughs> okay now then what about lotsa lot lotta so I think I looked this up and I think it didn't have it um but so yeah it doesn't have lotta but lotta I don't know if this is related. Lota is like a, a curse, like a light by it, right? So he to curse or also to cover, to talk secretly, uh, or to curse. So I don't know exactly how this translates, but I I it seems to me like um like what is this? Gasa uh let's see, is, uh Yabia Ivelis is I guess uh you know abundant in in cursing. I don't know if that's like, uh, you know, again, and when you're dealing with, with things like the, the Pshitata or like these ancient uh, texts, you know, sometimes it's not a translation of the Hebrew. Sometimes they had a different 
um, uh, uh, like manuscript of the Tanakh, right? So, um, and the, the general, uh, I got really into this last year. The general stance is, you know, we have a Masoretic text, but the Masoretic text that we have is based on a majority of Torah scrolls, right? So the the Anshe Knesset Agdola or, uh, or later, I mean, originally Anshe Knesset Agdola, you know, they, there were three main Torah scrolls in, uh, or, or copies of Tanakh in the um, in 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 the Mikdash or whatever at the time when they were doing this, and so they went with two out of three. Um, but some of them are like radically different words, you know. So the way that like methodologically, I think we should treat these things is when it comes to halacha. Obviously, we have we rely on the Masoretic text. But when it comes to like learning scripture, you know, then we, we, anything is fair game, meaning the, uh, meaning that if we have an ancient manuscript or an ancient Targum, you know, then that could reflect a, uh, a version of the Tanakh that, that, you know, we don't have anymore. And we've seen that many times in the Targum on Ksuvim. The, the example that stands out to my mind is, I think we had a puzzle last year where the English, sorry, not the English, the Hebrew in the puzzle said im with an ayin, Okay. Um, but the uh, the targum said aleph vav mem aleph uh, or hey uma, so which means that the targum was translating off of a a, a version where the nikudos were not im but am, you know. So like that that kind of thing. There's like the vestiges of these things. Okay, so take what you make from it. Okay, so that, that's pretty much a, a direct translation here. Okay. So what, oh, let me just move this. Oh, sorry, art scroll. The tongue of the wise will enhance wisdom, but the mouth of fools will spout foolishness. Rav Hirsch says the tongue of the wise improves knowledge. Be to you. I, uh, what is that? That's for air conditioners, right? Or is that, I'm thinking of something else. Isn't there a unit of something with electricity? Like amps? No, that's amps. No, 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 BTUs. All right, whatever. Am I imagining this? I thought it was for AC. Hold on a second. Uh, BTU. That was locked. British thermal unit, a measure of heat, which is the form of energy, was originally defined. Is this for air conditioning? We use what? Oh, oh, I think it does. Yeah, yeah, right. When you're buying an air conditioner, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. I'm not crazy. Oh, okay. I got a bunch of like a uh, blank looks. I was like, maybe no. Okay, maybe none of you have bought air conditioners before. All right. Um. Uh. Okay. So and then Alter. Uh. Oh, sorry. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Alter says the tongue of the wise improves knowledge, but the mouth of dullards bubbles with folly. <laughs> okay, so he's really going with the uh, the poetic um, bubbling spring, right? Okay, so let's do this. Let's take our translation. I mean, I think our translation is fine, uh, but I'll keep those up there in case anyone wants to make recourse to them. Okay, so what are the questions and problems, Ari Ariel? The subject of the pasuk. Oh, favorite question. What is the subject of the pasuk? And because this is the first time this has been raised this year, then let me just give a little methodology thing here, right? So mm -hmm. first, so Rabbi Moskowitz, I call this Rabbi Moskowitz's question because there was a, a time period. Rabbi Moskowitz has gone through many phases of like Michelin methodology, but there was a time period when he would always ask, force us to answer the question, what is the subject of the pasuk? And, um, and I think it's a useful question, but sometimes it like it really just um, highlights like a crossroads in how you take the idea. And the example that I remember it from was there's a puzzle that says, Amar Atzel Ari Bahutz Barachovas Eratzea. So the lazy person says, um, there's a lion outside, I'm going to be slaughtered in the streets. Okay. So you read that puzzle and you think that it's a puzzle about laziness because it's what the lazy person says. And you could learn it as a puzzle about laziness. Um, however, can you just put this on a different table because yes, I'm sir. paranoid? Thank you. Um, yeah, um, too many tables have been kicked in history, um, and too many laptops have been ruined. Um, so, um, so when Rabbi Moskowitz and I learned it, it ended up being a pasuk about rationalization, and it was just using the lazy person as an example. The idea being that when you want to rationalize something, you come up with reasoning that sounds insane. You know, like if I go outside, I'm going to get eaten by a lion. You know. Um, and you don't really realize it. And so it was just using the the lazy person as an example, you know, so asking what the subject is could dictate um, how you take the idea. Okay, so what's the subject? Yes. I mean, really what I'm asking, because like the reason why I ask this is because it, so it sounds a little push it. Like, okay, right. So it has so many pasukim that I feel like talks about this idea. Like what's the, like what makes this pasuk so special? Okay. That's sounds like, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Like very pushy. Now I did not actually go back and look at this. I, I think I wrote this in the, in the, the sheer blurb is that uh, I'm, I feel like we we did this pasuk, yeah. which might mean that we just had a very similar thing, or it could be we did it on Monday night last four years. So I, I do want to look for a similar one. But yeah, what's what, what's the, the idea? Yeah. Um, what does it mean that the are improving knowledge? Are they 
Are they teaching people? Or are they modifying the knowledge itself? Okay, so I the way I would formulate this, and tell me if this, uh, if if you disagree with this formulation, um, whose knowledge? Okay, um, or let's let's make it even broader. What is the the das uh, in this context? Uh, and where does it reside? Uh, and who to whom does it belong? Okay, meaning, is it their own knowledge, the knowledge of the people they're talking to, or knowledge itself? I think those are the three main possibilities. I mean, you could also say there's a fourth possibility, no. but I think that would be included. What was it? You, you could say it's the knowledge of the fools, but that's a little weird to make them interact. So, but and that would be included under the knowledge of the people they're talking to. Uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, okay, so the Matsuda Sion, when he's when he's translating it via a speak. Yeah. Okay, fine. So it's funny because like the way where he's getting it from, you know, from like a well spring that is a source of flow of lots of water. Yeah. That sounds like a good thing. You know, so but Okay, via, yeah, yeah, that's good. Know, that's a good question. A All right, that, that is a good question, right? Okay, so if we factor in the uh right, so the denotation use English terms, the denotation is uh, to speak, but the connotation is to bubble, right? Like a spring, right? So if we factor in the connotation of uh, of a, a flowing wellspring, that sounds like a good thing. So why use that, um, you know, specific phrase to describe the uh, the, the fools? And I'll, I'll contrast this with another example. Um, would there be, can you think of a term like, well, okay, when you, if I'd said that it's describing the uh, foolishness coming out of the fool's mouths as like flowing, do you get specific imagery other than a spring? What's your specific imagery? Vomit. Yeah. I, okay, right. I also, right. I also think I, of vomit. Uh, what? No. What are you saying? Okay. When people say diarrhea of the mouth. Yeah, right, diarrhea. right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So like, like there are ways to say that. Like, it could say vomits knowledge. Like we have a word for that, right? In in you know makey uh, you know um, makey evals, right? But like, so like if you wanted to say like negative flow, there are ways to do it. I don't know if that's the only one. Yeah, Ezra. I don't see how it's a good thing to flow with foolishness. No, it's not. That's his question. Is <laughs> yeah. it a, a yeah. wellspring flowing with water is a good thing, right? Like if I said. You know, if if I start off by saying like a spring flowing with water, so is you would assume I'm talking about kachanim. So is the foolishness that comes from the mouth of fools is like it clashes. You know, the implication clashes. That's Ariel's question. Yeah, uh, David. A few linked questions. Uh, what is lashon in this context? Yeah. Okay. So what what does lashon? I guess, I'm gonna go ahead and link that to the to the related question. So what, if anything, is the difference between lashon and p? Right? Um, do they both mean speech, or uh, or does the does the nuance uh, convey something important? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, Moshe. Um, yeah, there was a general question I was going to ask. I guess related to Arnold's question. Of, it seems like Xilom are always formatted as um, spewing, like 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 Yefia or Yefia Xilom. I feel like that's the thing that they're always. Um, constantly putting out information. Yeah, but it seems like Chachamim aren't. Mm. Meaning, is it is it contrasting with Chachamim saying they're um, outputting a lot of information, whereas they aren't, or they're being selected? Okay. Or are you saying is it just that? Meaning, why aren't Chachamim, you know, spewing goodness? Okay. So how exactly are the two halves of this puzzle opposites, and that encompasses many things. One is um is you know uh. What I, I guess, um, just give me one second here. If the xilim, um, are yabia, they're ivelis, okay. Does this imply that the chachamim are, are not yabia, they're, they're das, right? Like, you know, um, and, uh, and you know, I think the opposite is definitely implied, meaning the Chachamim or Tetiv Das and the Chachim are not doing that, right? But uh, I guess, but maybe you can ask that also, right? Is uh, does does the first half imply that the Chachim are being Tetiv 
their their Ivelis, right? Sure. That's yeah. So, so like I guess yeah. To what extent are they opposites? I I want to show you now also by the way, um, without okay. So ignore ign like don't don't read the part of the Rubina Yona that I don't want you to read. <laughs> okay. Um, he Rubina Yona. Uh, says so he gives his shot. Ah, so then he says at the end. Okay, so he rejects, sorry, so he says it's possible that it means that they improve other people's knowledge, but then he says, which means the language of the Pasuk does not um, fit, uh, is not uh, arranged opposite this. Okay, meaning the, the footnote guy in the good Rubin Yona says, uh, I don't know about your Rubin Yona, which is also good, but says that like Rubin Yona is rejecting this because it's not opposites, you know, which again is just a vindication of the of the, the methodology here that we should assume that the puzzle is stating opposites. And if it doesn't, then, uh, you know, but the question is to what extent? Okay. Yeah. What do you mean rejecting it? Uh, he says, Ach in Alashan Narach Lumazet, meaning that he says, some say it means this, but the language doesn't seem like opposites. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. In terms of the second half of the Pazuk, it seems pretty natural that the wolves will be spreading foolishness. Yeah. So what's it adding? Okay, right. So, so I'm going to go ahead and put that into the obvious question, which is sounds obvious, especially uh, the second half. Uh, okay, right. So, so I'll, and I, in fact, I'll make it like this. Okay, is... is um, w uh, wherein lies the Chiddush. Okay, so we've had Psukim before where each half is a Chiddush. And then we've also had Psukim where the Chiddush really is in one half and you only need the, you do need to state something obvious in order to call your attention to the non-obvious. Yeah, okay. yeah. Another question is just like the Das. Yeah. Is the Ivelis or... Okay, right, from? right. Very Ivelis, is it somebody else's Ivelis? Likewise, um, uh, what is the Ivelis? Uh, in this context, uh, uh, and to whom does it belong, etc. Yeah. Uh, first. What was that? David? Yeah. Uh, what does it mean to be Metis Da'at? Yeah. Okay, that's going to be a central question here. So, what, uh, in what sense do they Tetiv Da'as? Uh, yeah, Tetiv Da'as. Da'as, yeah. Da'as, okay. All right, yeah. Um, uh yeah uh, Im improve in what in what way yeah 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 um also like all the definition questions like like what does what does um chachama mean here what does right. what does das mean here what does xila mean here yeah you know, you know what's funny so i all the definitions i forgot if i told you i, I know i said this on monday night but i'm now um for better or for worse i mean i think it's for better and for worse i am preparing these mishle shirim Okay, because I'm learning one on one with a with a high school student. So he had me from Mishle all of last year. Uh, so when we did this one, he just fired off. I said, "What are the questions?" He said, "What is Lushan? What is Kachamim? What is Tati? What is Das? What is Yeah. And then what I did is I thought it was good. I said, "Okay, now let's go through that list that you rattled off and see are these the best ways to formulate each question." And he quickly realized that when it comes to Chachamim and Kselim, like that's a good question. But then what is Lushan? It's better to say, you know. Is our lush on the P the same or is there, you know, and, and he realized that. So it's a, uh, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Okay. So what is the definition of Chachamim and Kisilim, uh, Kisilim in this context? And again, again, I'm going to try to repeat as much methodology as possible early in the year that um, even if you have a working definition of a Mishleic jargon term, right, you should always ask afresh what the definition is because this might be the Pasuk. That gives you a new data point that causes you to completely like refine your your definition, you know. So like, never get too locked into your preconceived notions, even if they come from decades of initially. Yeah. Uh, Eugene, so far as I forget whether you like or don't like asking the question like why Hacham versus Navon, or I mean, figuring this one, I feel like it's being me too. Sure, uh, we can ask that. Uh, um, I don't know what your general stance is on that. Yeah. That particular type of good or particular type of bad. And why specifically Hachamim and Kselim? uh here yeah um I, I do i actually would ask that more for the second half here again i have not done a a survey or whatever but i think psukim about speech and fools typically is going to be an edvial okay um in my experience okay so it's not that you don't have a puzzle about fools talking but like i don't know and and if you're going to say well it's saying evil it's saying seal because it doesn't want to say evil and there is a puzzle that i think we did Recently, 
Xilium and Velas. Xilium and Velas, yeah, right. Okay, I know it says Xilium, right? But the, the puzzle does not mind using the same term twice, even when it sounds like a tautology, you know? So it could have said, Ufi, uh, Evelium, Yabia, Evelas, you know? And we would still have the same question that's obvious, but this is less obvious. Yeah. Okay. So in your opinion, which half of the puzzle is harder? Mm, I would say the second half is harder in that it seems obvious. Uh, the first half, though, um, and the first half seems to be saying a chiddush because if you just explain what tetiv means and whose das it is, then you got an idea already. All right, do we have all the questions? I guess we should ask um, who is the intended audience, right? Um, and here, I think it's not clear, right? Uh, is this like if people who are listening to chachamim and listening to evilim? Is it people who want to become chachamim and uh, not become uh, evilim? You know, is this chachamim themselves? Uh, certainly not xilim. Okay, uh, and then uh, what is the practical uh, application, right? Again, if this is, see, this is a good question about uh, the subject, right? If this is a puzzle about how to speak, you're going to get certain ideas. If it's about how to listen, you're going to get other ideas. And even if it stems from the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Ideas. Speaking of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have one, but I'm not happy with it. You know, it's like because it's too obvious. Look, Kohal says you can never be happy. No, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I want to mean like, like, like the chiddush for the first half of the pasuk at least is coming to tell you that like you, you just you know the the way you 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 speak will will affect your your mindset. Okay, so let's start off with that. Do you say you're not happy because it's obvious? Yeah, it's just oh, so okay. So it's here, like, yeah, here's before. yeah. Okay, so here here's another um. Uh, I know, again, I know I've said this many times, but it bears repeating, okay, is the question is when you have uh, either two sides of a machlokis, or you have two sides of a pasuk, or you have an obvious idea, the question is where do you start, okay, right? So the way I heard this uh, in my own experience was when I was in yeshiva for the first year, Rabbi Mann said that if you have a machlokis, you should start working on the side that that is easiest, because your intuition is already going in that direction. So take your intuition, even if it sounds obvious, and then formulate it, and then you'll get a side and then work on the harder side. Then I asked Rabbi Moskowitz, and he said, if you have a machlokas, Davka, don't work on the side that 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 makes sense to you because it's going to lock you into intuition that's going to blind you to seeing the other side. So force yourself to work on the side that is that does not make sense to you and then go to the side that is easy. And then I asked Rebbe, okay, I said, Rem man says this and Rebbe Moskowitz says, says this. And he says, I disagree with both of them. I think when it comes to thinking, then there are no rules, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so yeah, so I would say similarly, there are no rules. I do agree with that. But I think in Mishle, sometimes, especially if you've been learning Mishle a lot, you, you get, you have a puzzle like this, you get what feels like a cliche idea. And I think there are two approaches. You either embrace the cliche and then delve into it to try to get the finish, or you throw away the cliche and force yourself to think along lines that are totally not cliche in hopes of like getting a new idea. So I don't think it's a bad move to do what you did, which is to state something that's so obvious. No, <laughs> that's so obvious, right? Okay, so so you uh, say it again. Um, you oh, said um, that. Yeah, the way the way you the, the words you use or, or the way you speak uh, will affect your mindset will affect your mindset or knowledge well uh, knowledge okay yeah okay good right so this is the um uh so so all right so now the question is if we're going to build on that anyone want to elaborate on that <laughs> to make it not obvious or to clarify it or to show a particular idea here yeah maybe your speech will like clarify your ideas like ah, okay that. so that's better okay right um so uh your your speech will actually clarify your ideas, meaning that speech speech can be can be used as a tool for for thinking itself, right? Um, yeah, um, and this is the phenomenon of you're saying good, say better, okay, right? They're when your Rebbe says that they're not just saying you have a perfectly good idea, you just got to say it better. He's saying by saying it better, you can actually get a clear idea. Same thing in. Um, uh, I I don't know how everyone else relates to this, but there are certain ideas that I have to think in writing. Like I can't, mostly when I write my articles, I don't come up with the whole thing and then write it down. I have to work it through in writing because the speech exactly like forces you to be clear in a way that 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 unarticulated thoughts don't. Yeah, what are you saying? I was going to say the same, but uh, 
not writing, but actually speaking sometimes like right. talking, like talking to yourself. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. Some, somehow, right, you know, somehow the process of, of, of saying something, uh, aloud, you know, crystallizes your thoughts. Um, I think there's a class, I think it's classic, uh, halakhic riot to this. Oh, um, uh, Shema is a good Svara Raya. There's one that's a uh, uh, V doing. Okay, there are lots of things in in, in Torah where where uh, articulating it um, where the Torah makes you articulate it because it has an impact on you that's different. Um, I, I'm looking. There, there's something that in that actually seems to indicate that the full form of learning is only in speech. So I I haven't looked this up in many years, but I believe the the halacha that if you're thinking Torah, you don't have to say because of Torah, but if you speak or write Torah, then you have to say because of Torah. And the reason why is because you know, obviously when you're doing here who are Torah, that is learning, right? But the bracha is on the full Maisa mitzvah or whatever. And uh, it is a I think a grah. Yeah, gra was 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 uh, was in my mind, but I forgot which side it was, so I didn't say it. Yeah. Mishnah Bura like it says, oh, like the reason you only make it on like. If you're like speaking, or yeah. Like, if you're doing like a mic stuff. Uh huh. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Good. Good call. Okay. Yeah, Sean. Yeah. So if we're going down the Moshe's path. Yeah. So then, what are the uh, ceiling doing? Right. That's going to be the question. Right. It seems like if we're saying that through speaking, you realize that your ideas aren't clear and you refine them. Right. Why is that not something that's uh, applicable to what the ceiling are doing? Or like non-accessible uh, pathway for them. So are you? Uh, let me just think for a second. Are you asking? Are you asking why they don't do this with their with their their Ivelis? Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. Right. So then, so the question is, why don't the Xilim, uh Xilim do this with their Ivelis? Uh, yeah, Ezra. I think it, they do do this, and that's the problem. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, right. So, so per, you know, so perhaps they do, but uh, but but since the the substance they're working with, uh, sorry, they're working with is foolishness, then what happens? If it gets crystallized. Okay, then the the, the then that's what gets uh gets crystallized. You who asked for example? Wait. Yeah, yeah. You you have an example? Um, I'm saying any of these examples that we're talking about, say like in learning, um, yeah, like uh, you say something that's just like not true. I'm just classic. Like uh, um, if I if I let's say I thought to myself like, oh, the Ivelis is is like they don't keep going blah blah blah, and then I say that wow, well, like right now. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best example. <laughs> I, I I was you have another example. Not like a specific one, but I think like at least I relate to this. I assume everyone does that. Like sometimes you. Can... Have come up with an idea, yeah, which like isn't really a great idea, and you're not sure about it. But then once you start talking out and saying it, you sort of convince yourself that it's true and makes sense. Yeah, and then you end up saying it and going over, and it ends up you end up being convinced and stalling out the idea further because you've said it. You, yeah, you don't realize that it's a really bad idea. Right. Um, Is that making me? Be... What? Oh, uh, I have a meme that I made about that, but I'll, I'll save it for later. <laughs> um, um, uh. I I have an example. You have an example. No. Okay. An example. I think is um. I feel like there are people who are prone to conspiracy thinking, okay? And when you ask them questions that are designed to refute them, they just formulate more absurd and specific ideas, you know? Like it is, their thinking is guided by by their psyche and imagination. So, so for them, clarity is just entrenching them more in in you know baseless assumptions and uh and imaginative like solutions you know um so yeah uh, yeah Moshe? yeah so maybe you give a different answer and say that rather than rather than saying that the ulus is clarifying or crystallizing his ideas that the idea of the lush and Chacham specifically as opposed to Ibelis, is that when he uh comes to the point of uh, formulating his ideas in words he already has a certain intent that he's trying to like he's thinking about his ideas and he's trying to clarify them as opposed to the Ibelis is just spewing. So mm. uh, the actualization of the words and speech doesn't do anything. Uh, that's interesting. Hold on just one second. So you were putting in the focus on the intent of the Chacham vis-a-vis -vis his speech, that he already is trying to like formulate the knowledge. Yeah. Are you saying with the fools that there is a, that part of what results in this Yabia Ibelis is a lack of effort to clarify? Or are you saying like because Ezra sounded like you were saying 
fools do endeavor to do the same thing, but because they're working with foolishness, then it gets. I don't think they're even intending it. They're just. Oh, it's unintentional. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that I think works out with the yabia is like the flow, meaning like it's a, uh, I don't want to say unconscious process, but they're, they're not. Um, okay. Yeah. No, unfiltered. That's the word. Yeah. Exactly. They're, they're not filtering their speech. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So, so say what you're saying again, that the yeah, Chachamim yeah, are. Yeah. yeah. The Lashon uh, Chachamim means that the Chachamim is uh, making conscious effort to refine his thoughts in his speech. Yeah. How, as opposed to the Ivelis, who is just expressing them, like at least without a filter. Okay, right. And that's why uh, it doesn't become crystallized. Okay. Or, Themselves okay. Um, uh, in an unfiltered uh, way. Yeah, Ariel? Yeah, I, I, have, I have a different answer. For I'm not talking as a different okay. I want to I argue that that really they... They're not thinking about it. I was because I, I think the I think the premise of an avil is that they, you know, they, they don't really. I th I think they think that they they know everything, or or they're not mm -hmm. really willing to, you know, they think they're right immediately, and they're not willing to, um, you know, uh, better themselves, you know, by thinking that you know, getting more clarity will help them. Right. Yeah, you know, and and I think with the chacham, like like he wants to improve on himself, and like that's just, it's just naturally going to help him. Out. Right. So the, uh, yeah. the pasuk says that uh, explicitly. Lo yach. This was the first pasuk we ever did in Monday morning or in morning Mishlei here. Right. Mm -hmm. Is eighteen two. Lo betfuna ki imbi galos libo. There's lots of ways to translate that, but um, the way you're saying is the fool does not desire tvuna understanding. He only desires um expressing himself. Okay, Libo here meaning him, him, himself, his mind, his feelings. Yeah, yeah and right. I think like yeah, Bia, you know, maybe you can say that like you know, just like someone listening to him or whatever, like he's just said a lot of crazy stuff, you know, as if it's like you know, the, you know, like there's it's a never ending thing. Right. Like, uh, the flow. Of, uh, the consumer not trying to attain knowledge and understanding. Uh, they're they're just trying to just you know express express they listen to themselves talk. They're yeah themselves. And hear themselves, uh, hear themselves talk. Yeah. What was the second thing you said after that? I was still trying to process what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was just saying like, whatever. Like like you know what they just say so many different things. Yeah. And, like it's like a never ending. Right. Know, uh, uh ceaseless thing. Whatever it is, and like yeah, it's like a, um, like a spring. Like a spring. Yeah. Um, side methodology note here. So, uh, I don't know if anyone else is confused by what we're doing right now, but usually what we do is we take one approach and we develop it. I do think that there are certain psukim where the most fruitful, um, uh, I guess, step in developing the idea, get everything out on the table and then let it sort through it and see how many distinct ideas there are, you know, because I, I think, I think this one is, there are many directions you can go. So I think just getting it all out today and then like, you know, uh, uh, uh separating them tomorrow. Yeah. So I think, uh, this post, like the very first thing that Ariel said was that it will affect your own knowledge. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you are just one of the listeners to yourself. Right. Um, but there are multiple people who will be picking up what you're what you're saying. Yeah. Whether it's it's a you know lesson chachamim or pikesim. Right. It's okay. So I, I I like the way of saying that is that the the oh yeah, I forgot there's multiple people now. Uh as a as, as a couple. Yeah. All right. Um the um the the primary uh effect is in the knowledge in your own mind but when you express it uh then it has the benefit of being you know heard and understood by others uh so uh, I, I think that actually is a nice um solution here because now we can we can say that the puzzle is really talking first about yourself but then there are other ripple effects for good or for bad based on who you're you are and who you're talking to and who's hearing it yeah Moshe. yeah so i had um i was thinking maybe the the das is talking not about the Chacham's own das, but rather about the collective das or main das outside himself. In the union sense, no, right. I'm just yeah. <laughs> when, yeah. When someone comes up with an innovative idea that completely changes people's frameworks, that then becomes the accepted idea. It helps everyone else. So like, thing like Newton's theory of uh, motion, yeah. where uh, it completely changed science, and now everyone thinks in his, in his way of science, and no one thinks of Aristotle's method. Because he like quote unquote improved the knowledge. Okay, right. Um, for everyone, whereas Xilom, um will, you know, basically spread lies to either people will believe those lies or they'll just believe in foolishness generally. 
and not in uh, pursuing knowledge. Yeah. Um, so uh, Newton transformed the uh, knowledge of physics through formulations. Let's come up with an anti-Newton, uh, whereas Jesus, uh, <laughs> I don't know, Jesus uh, or his followers or whatever, um, uh, you know, formulated uh, an idea that, that you know, uh, a foolishness that, you know, that took on a life of its own and uh, and set back humanity, you know, in many ways, um, you know, uh, by spreading, right? Yeah, so that is, so that's an interesting thing. Give me one second here. So th even though I still stand by what I said about, about Ezra's idea, the subject here is different, meaning we're really talking about how are you impacting the knowledge that's out there that's being passed around, right. even after your, your life. Like, in other words, your idea is going to be confined to a certain extent, or the focus, the spotlight is going to be on how what I'm saying affects my mind and the minds of the people who listen to me. This is talking about, like, knowledge out there as a whole, like right. in humanity, in an abstract almost. Yeah, Ezra? Oh, uh, sorry, sorry, Mo Moshe was next. Yeah, Moshe? Um, right, so I wanted to go to a different route and say the subject that you spoke well to um, is, is about uh, Yabia, right? Specifically, um, the, way the, the way that the school was Huh. Okay. So I'm I'm picking up on the fact that the that the pasuk is uh, saying that uh, talking about the the problem's effect as a as a, and that's being almost opposed to the fool's content, right? As as a almost like it's saying that the it doesn't really matter what the chacham will say, but it will, but the mushroom, whatever that means, is going to have a positive effect as opposed to the fools. No, um, they aren't going to have any effect at all, not because they are uh, evil led, right? Because I, as I, as I said, almost as if they come, they also say evil but because of the way they say it, yeah, uh, which is mm -hmm. a flowing, uh, uh, flowing water, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I guess I have to define more what that. Okay, yeah. So the 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 approach you're taking, I think, has uh, merit because uh, by you know, there's putting the emphasis on the the verb. Um, but I think we can't put everything into the manner because it does say daas and ivelas. So if you can incorporate that, then or, or address that, then I think you got something going I, I there. I think I can help because I, yep. I was thinking a different idea similar to his. Sure. You can tell me if this is what you're saying. But I, I, you know, it's funny because like the first half of the puzzle says uh, the 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 tongue of the wise. Yeah. Meaning, may, maybe it's another individual. Maybe it's it's an, another party that can improve one's knowledge. Meaning, like if you're surrounding yourself with individuals who have. Oh, okay. oh so meaning meaning I have the knowledge. Yeah, you have the knowledge. And then and if I'm, I'm around for coming. You yeah. talk, you know, then, then, then those yeah. can improve it's my knowledge because it doesn't really say who the wise person is. It just says uh -huh. the language of oh, the, the wise. Yeah, well, you know? that is definitely an interesting idea, and I think it could help him because, like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay, see. okay. I see. I see. And it's then it goes into the it does feel well. like it helps. Yeah. All right, so let me let me just take a note of this. Okay, is uh, uh, again, I I uh, I don't know if this is a separate idea, but um, but you know the emphasis. Uh, of the Pasuk uh, is on the process, not the content. Um, and when, you know, you you have a certain amount of knowledge and foolishness uh, in your mind, okay? Uh, if you're around Chachamim, uh, their speech will enhance your knowledge, uh, meaning, meaning even if they're not teaching you anything new, right? Um, uh, if you hang around Selim or spend a lot of time on Twitter, uh, then the, uh, the speech of fools, uh, of fools will, um, uh, I guess, uh, solidify, I can't say enhance, right? Enhance sounds weird. Degrade. Degrade, well, yeah. Will cause your... Like it has no effect. Again, I think it has no effect at all. Okay. Well, also, it will not do that, but could, um, could, uh, I guess, um, stunt or degrade your, your, uh, no, I don't like saying that. Brain rot? That's not. <laughs> <laughs> Amplify your foolishness. 
Yeah, I don't think it's neutral. I don't think that's going to happen. I think that uh, that would be against neutral. the plus. Yeah. yeah um, uh, sorry, Ezra, you had something earlier. Um, on Moshe's yeah. uh, idea, I think like the the anti Newton would be closer to something like the Christians who rejected all the astronomers. Like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's idea, good. And they were like instead of bubbling up like ideas of like of of uh, that were kind of outdated. Right. Being skepticism. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah. Whereas, uh, let's just say, whereas um, others, for example, uh, anti science uh, Christians, skeptics, uh, postmodernists, uh, um, uh, like, I guess, uh, um, corrupt knowledge in a way that, that can set back humanity um, and lead people astray. Yeah. Yeah, Sean? David? Mine is like a totally different read. So sure. Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. Um, Get them all out on the table today. We'll sort through it tomorrow. Yeah. Sure. Clean um, is it possible to read it uh, that dot is TTs watch from Tal Kamim and the Abel is going to be on the future series? Whoa. Okay, wait. So Das is Tetiv the Lashon of the Chamin. And the Abel is going to be on the future series. That is creative. The Um. The only thing I'm not sure about is Ivelis masculine. That it, it hinges on that. Isn't that reading the plus backwards? Uh, so you can do that in Hebrew. Um, uh, what's the example, the go-to example of this? Um, uh, give me one second here. I think there's an example in 10. Uh, oh, no, no, there's an example in, um, uh, in, hold on just one second here. Yeah, it is in 10, Rush. Rush Tash here. So this either means a poor person makes deceitful scales or deceitful deceitful scales make a person poor. And that's just the function of Hebrew. Okay. Just, yeah. Um, or oh, there's a oh, there's a great uh, Rabbi Sachs on um on the bracha uh, on on the, the Navua about uh Yaakov and Esav, the Rav Yaavod Tsair. Yeah, that was, here, yeah. yeah, right. So uh, Rabbi Sachs says that that's intentionally un, uh, ambiguous because you can either can mean the Rav, if you treat that as the subject, the great one, Ya'avod, will serve Sa'ir, the younger one, mm -hmm. okay? Or the Rav could be the object, the older one, Ya'avod Sa'ir, the younger one will serve. Uh -huh. You know, and so uh, I thought that was a, a nice, like, nuanced read. And, and yeah, yeah, so you can do that. Uh, so David wants to say, uh, let's call this, uh, this is a hot take. Okay, right? All right, so this is, uh, yeah. Okay, yeah it's a hot take. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> David's uh, hot take read, okay, is um, is the, actually, we, we, this this deserves to be put up here as a separate translation, right? So um, the Mitsudas. David um, <laughs> is uh, is um, uh, the knowledge of uh, sorry knowledge knowledge improves the speech of the wise but foolishness like spouts out I don't know exactly how it okay yeah <laughs> yeah so, um, foolishness I'll, we'll use flow out. as a in, in he feel flows the mouth of uh, of a fools. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, what's your idea? Uh, oh, sorry. You have a question on the reading. Like, we'll make the mouth of the fool flow. I just don't know if that if you could read it. I, I don't know if you could read it. Some in general of like yeah, via to, to be to make something flow. Okay. Fine. But yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I just want to try to preserve the Hebrew. Yeah. Um. Okay. So so I think that so far as when there is. Oh, or that when there is dot that is put forth. Yeah. I think that both um I mean makes chakam. I think chakam will then take that that knowledge and like think about it and then they will then like it'll it'll better their idea because they are engaging directly with that knowledge. And I think like chakam will come forth once knowledge is already put out there. Right. I mean it'll improve their but you're saying it improves their speech. Yes. So then as far as I know what they're talking about, like once they have new information, once there's new dot that they have, their speech will become better. They're, I mean, I think their thoughts and their, their, what they will say will become better. Right. And I think on the flip side, uh, when something stupid comes, uh, when something stupid is brought up, I think that then uh, Kisilim and people who are very attached to, to stupidity 
the villagers start bubbling, like just like um, I'm missing the word, but just like keep saying and saying and saying, we're going to be rambling. Um, Babble is probably the word that stem, stems from bubble, right? Um, yeah, or Babel, yeah. Uh, they'll babble more and more stupidity that they have uh, related to this. Yeah. This okay, all right, that, that's a good approach. And then let's go with Sean and then we'll stop for today. Yeah, Sean? Yeah, I was thinking in terms of the... <laughs> what does it mean to be tetu da? Mm -hmm. um, and so <laughs> perhaps the difference between what Chachamim do in terms of information versus what um, Ksilim do is that the Ksilim, um, whenever there's something, they just go with the flow of it. And so they just add on supports to whatever is being said versus what a Chacham does is he, he provides nuance and it's through nuance that you end up getting a greater understanding of the um, the da'as, so like the bubbling up is like the supporting, I guess, in a sense, uh -huh. of that's the way in which casinos operate of they hear something that they like and they just try and figure out ways in which it works. Mm -hmm. Whereas Hakamim see something that they like, but they don't just let it sit where it is. They want to find nuance in it and see how it um, applies in unique situations versus might not necessarily apply in other situations. Mm -hmm. And so they refine it. Okay, right. So the, the muscle doesn't quite sit well with me, uh, right. using flow to meet support. And I think if you go with the imagery of like a flowing river, move something along, that to me does not, like it, there'd be a more direct way to say that. So I, I think the idea is good. I'm not I'm not so sure about the muscle. Um, I forgot to, when I was looking up the, the for David's thing, I forgot to see whether Ivelis is feminine or masculine. Yeah, let's just check that out really quickly. Um, Ivelis is, nope. Wait, I clicked on the wrong word. Or did it take me to the wrong place? No, sometimes it does this for some reason. Uh, is feminine. So that does not work, right? Oh. Yeah. Oh, well. It was a nice, it was a nice try. It was a nice try. And and and, and, and Ariel is going to say if he's here, well, can you still do it for the first half? And I'm going to say, no, Ariel, it's not going to, you know, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't, it, it, that'd be like a really, really inelegant reading. I'm going to, I'm going to preserve it for posterity with a, the strike through because it was an important read. Okay. All right. So let's let these thoughts uh, not bubble in our minds. Cost for shalom. Let's talk about these thoughts <laughs> between now and tomorrow and then try to get a better formulation. Uh, yeah, Moshe. Right. At least with what, um, Sean or I was saying it, it at least caught at least the fools right in the content of what he was saying. But all these other ideas seem to at least the, the fools talk about their effect, but the Pusik doesn't mention their effects, right? Or or, or what they do with right. their context. So I don't know how you Right. So I, the puzzle seems to be saying that the improvement of the knowledge itself is a good thing, but you're right. It doesn't spell out the consequence of the foolishness. So yeah, that's a good question. We should add to our questions. Right. But everyone else is talking, mentioning that. So I'm wondering how we're making that leap. Everyone else uh, is mentioning what the, most the ideas are talking about the, the consequence the of the foolishness. I'm an effect of the Cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think because we are assuming that initially is going to tell us a positive effect and a negative effect, but yeah, we need to know where to get, where, where we get that from. Yeah. I'll, I'll add that as a question. Okay. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Yeah. <laughs> I'll really like that bad Sara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> By the way, um, yeah. Yellowstone, they have uh, like hot springs, fumaroles, like like spring and like a mud pot that like. Oh yeah. Like, right. And, oh, mud pot might be a good. Uh, they're like, they're like oh, disgusting. Yeah, right. They're really beautiful, but they're disgusting. Yeah, yeah, right, like, right. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.